today we're going to be doing a chainsaw kind of introduction and safety and just some things to go over um, before you get cutting. Uh, we're not going to cover cutting this time. Maybe we'll have something later for some cutting techniques and things like that. But for now, what we're going to do is uh, the basics. You know, what do you do? You bought a saw. You got a tree down in your yard. What do you do? You know, okay. Like again, so we're just going to cover how to get this thing started, the safety side of things, to make sure that you've got what you need to get started, and, and all that good stuff. So we got our friend here, uh, Bea. Hey guys. And uh, we, we met her, actually, it was kind of a weird day. Uh, so we were actually, uh, Mrs. Cadence and I were on a job out in the mountains somewhere. and. A storm came through and we were in the truck kind of sitting there like oh my gosh you know what is going on the world is coming to an end and uh, but it passed and then we're like okay well let's get out of here so we get down the driveway and we don't even get out of the driveway there's a tree down already across the road and you know I don't even have chainsaws with me because I had taken my saw box out of the truck uh, to put a bucket for the skid steer in here so I didn't even have that so anyway, so I, I used the Milwaukee Hacksaw, and I'll put a picture of that somewhere in here so you know what that is, with a pruning blade, and uh, here's a picture of that too. And um, that got us through, what, five of the six trees, something like that? So the seventh tree, let's just say, was a, a walnut that was probably, I don't know, 20-something inches around, and the poor little Hacksaw, it just was not going to make it through. So. I'm sitting there trying to whittle away at the branches, trying to figure out if I can get a chain hooked to the truck and drag it or something, 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 something to get out of there. The school bus couldn't drop the kids off, so here comes Bea. She comes down the road. She's trying to get out, and um, so she she's like, uh, do, do you know how to use a chainsaw? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got all the stuff still in the truck. I had my chaps, my felling helmet, my gloves, everything was in there. And, um, and she's like, well, my husband has one. I'll go get it. I'm like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. This is great. I, I can definitely do something. So she comes down with an 038 Magnum, I believe, uh, a vintage steel 038 of her husband's. And, uh, and we get through the tree, and everybody goes about their way. Well, uh, we, we, there's a, a local event later on. And we didn't know this. We said goodbye to Bea, and you know, we she's a nice lady, and 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 off we go our separate ways, right? Well, uh, we go to an event that's local, and uh, we actually found out she does pottery, and uh, we can put a link down below to her pottery stuff. You can check that out. And um, anyway, so we went to this event, and we were like, oh, she's gonna be there. We got to go say hi. You know, we know her. You know, so uh, so that's where we 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 met up again, and 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 kind of got got things going again so uh, anyways so that's the story that's why you know she she asked us hey can you help me I want to uh, I want to learn how to cut wood up to put into my kiln yes for making wood-fired pottery so I was like yeah absolutely let's do this I love it so uh, you know how much I love chainsaws I'm sure you guys have seen on the channel but either way if not check out some uh, some stuff I'll put some stuff somewhere for you to check out but anyway so yeah so let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started with um, with going through everything. We're gonna uh, I, like I made a little checklist here. So if you guys see me kind of looking down here, I don't want to get lost and glaze over something that needs to be covered. So um, so first thing is, you know, we've got this this chainsaw. This is steel MS 170, and um, these are these are very popular. Many many like they're very popular out everywhere so first thing we're gonna do we're kind of visually gonna inspect the the body make sure nothing's cracked broken missing you know the these things are kind of in place just real quick just kind of looking it over so we're gonna clean the body we're gonna check inside of here and make sure it's not loaded full of chips and it's not uh, it looks like that's fairly clean uh, you want to make sure the cooling fins, you know, like this isn't covered with a bunch of leaves and debris to where it's not going to allow the engine to cool. Um, that looks good. That looks good. This, all this is, this is open here, so, you know, we're, we're good. The cooling fins over here are clean, so we're good there. 
Um, let's say, okay, yeah, we're going to check the air filter. That's, a, that's a, a, a good one to check before we even get started. So on these steels, you'll have to flip this little lever down here. I like to push it down all the way, and then the, the body will come right off. So you're not fighting that, that lever to try to get that off of there. So this looks okay. Air filter looks good. It's, it's not dirty. You would see sawdust and stuff packed all around there. This is actually fairly clean. I'm, I'm surprised. But this normal stuff here, we can blow that out later. Um, just you know everything looks good you know this side of the cylinder here would get most of the the sawdust on it but that's nice and clean so we don't have to worry about that so let's see we're going to check the the i'm going to put the cover back on so on these 170s there's a uh, two little hinge points here and here um right underneath the hand guard and those these little pins fit right into this this little guy right here like that and then this just pushes down and remember we had this down already so that makes it a lot easier to get this on and off so if it was up you'd have to fight with it a little bit we got that so we're going to check the fuel oil mixture which is going to be in here and you want to make sure you you got what's recommended for your saw and uh, if you do mix something up if you, if you have questions about that um, we can definitely make a video. Just let me know if you want to know how to mix up fuel and oil, uh, uh, oil and, and gas to make a mix. So, it, you know, uh, there's lots of videos out there about that. And then, so we're going to check the gas in here. So you lay it over on its side, and uh, you can see there's there's gas down in there. It's full, so that's good. It's a good start. And um, put the cover, the cap back on there. Then over here we've got our um, our oil cap. Steel's pretty nice. If these old style screw on caps, if if it's too tight, you can use a your scrunch. This is a scrunch. This, if you don't have one of these, you'll you'll want to have one of these uh, because this has the bar nut uh, wrench on it and the spark plug wrench in case you need to remove your spark plug for whatever reason. If it, it might be bad, this also has the straight screwdriver on it for these caps. So we'll take that off. Look down in there. We got plenty of oil down in there. Okay. So we're good to go with that. And then, uh, like I said, this, this also does the bar nuts over here. So, and this has another size on it for Husqvarna chainsaws too. But anyway, so we're good to go with our fuel and oil. So next up, we need to check the bar, the chain, grease the nose, clean the bar groove, and clean out the oil hole. Make sure we're all good to go with that. So. Next up is again use your use your scrunch here. Now, I like to when I loosen these up, push away from the sharp chain. You're not going to have the scabbard on there while you're doing this. So this is a nice position to be in. Gives you good leverage. You see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. Your safety. You're not you're not running your hand into the chain and stuff like that. So you just loosen these guys up. Um, if you do this a lot, a ratchet makes it really easy, but this is easy to carry in the field. I carry it in my, my, my pouch, in my, my chaps here, so that I just have it with me all the time. That way if you pinch a bar, you can pull, you know, you can pull your bar off. These little nuts on here are lefty loosey, so counterclockwise pulls them off. Uh, you don't want to try to tighten them up and mess them up. So there's your side cover. Um, everything looks good with that. It has a little, <laughs> so this, this 170 actually has the chain catch built into the side cover. Um, I'm not not used to seeing that again. I don't own one of these 170s, but I know they're out a lot uh, But typically Husqvarna's are gonna have a, a metal chain catch that encompasses the whole The distance here. So that's the chain catch right there for for Husqvarna This is what steel uses is is that well for the 170 they on the other ones they have metal ones, too But I just wanted to show you the difference in case you guys were You know doing whatever so anyways that comes off these, uh, the, this one, the chain adjustment is in the front, so we'll just loosen, again, the flat screwdriver. We'll just loosen that up just a little bit, not too much, just to, just to kind of loosen that up some. And then um, pull this off. So we're just, we're just checking everything before we get started. I don't, um, maybe not do this every, every time that I get get going like every time you start it but once a day would be a good a good uh, frequency to do this so um, we took the bar off I think it was upside down we'll probably flip it over 
it might have been flipped already but every time I take the chain off I like to flip the bar back and forth that helps the wear of the bar stay consistent from the top and the bottom because you do the majority of your cutting on the bottom side of the bar as you're as you're cutting the on the the pull stroke is what it's called but um, so anyways we want to check this oil hole here this little oil hole you want to make sure that's clean this this little guy right here and in this case it is and uh, if you don't have one you'll need one of these too this is why I carry this in my pocket also and if I could ever get it out is a little what I call like a tuning screwdriver but this is like a little tweaker some people call them tweakers too but this one is nice and small it'll fit down in that hole and you can clean out you know if it was any debris down in there and the other thing you want to do is take this the little tweaker that you've got see all that gunk coming out of there guys so you want to make sure that's cleaned out too all the way down and out so on both sides not just the one side all the way down see all that mung I call it <laughs> but it's just it's just old dust and oil that gets caught up down in there and what that'll do is prevent some of your oil from going through your bar and lubricating your chain properly so you make sure that's out of there so make sure they're clean and again make sure make sure your oil hole is nice and clean and it is in this case so there we go all right now make sure your tip is good that it's not broken worn out whatever this looks good that spins steel bars don't have an oil hole in them where you would use a, a grease gun I'm not sure why but they don't do that maybe somebody can tell me why that'd be great let me know down below uh, if you know why steel bars don't have a hole in them to grease uh, Husqvarna bars we'll go back to my fancy little 335 XPT and Husqvarna bars have a hole in them to put grease in there um, this little guy right there again let me know so, there's that uh, let's see, so bar chain, gear, grease the nose, clean the bar groove, and clean out the oil hole. We did all that. Everything looks good in here. You know, you want to make sure uh, the other part of the oil hole that you want to clean out would be this, this guy right here. Usually it doesn't get all clogged up with a bunch of gunk, but uh, it, it could. So just, just make sure that's this, this groove right here is all cleaned out. So that's good to go there and you can check your sprocket while you're in here um, look on your manufacturer this this groove depth right here will need to be within the minimum specs on this this clutch drum this is a spur but uh, instead of a, a rim sprocket but whatever um, but yeah check these grooves to make sure they're not too deep this one looks okay uh, you'll want to change your your clutch drum every two chains if you wear a chain out completely instead of just messing it up and then check your clutch drum needle bearing there's a bearing underneath it here that this that this spins on this is freewheeling because the engine's not running spreading out the clutches and that's what makes the chain start going and stop going with inertia so uh, with this clutch drum being like this uh, this freewheeling it's, it's that's a good thing and it's nice and tight so this this bearing is good and you would change that we can make a video on that let me know if you want to see how to do that we can do that too but that's a more in-depth thing than just a daily check so steel chains they have the internal clutch husk varnas have external clutches we won't go over that today but um, I like to put the bar on lay the chain in there okay Make sure it's kind of in those grooves. You might have to tilt the chain out a little bit to get it to wrap around the nose. This is kind of the tricky part. It can be, not too too bad, but just lay it down in there and then uh, kind of get everything to, to line up and make sure the moon is in the right phase and all those good things. So, again, can be a little, a little dicey, but there you go. That, that got it. Get in there and behave. There we go. Okay. Let's see.
and if you have to loosen up your tensioner, sometimes you do, like this one, doesn't seem like it wants to line up, so I'm just spinning that tensioner back so that it fits into that hole right there, like that. So that's back on there good, and we can tighten it up a little bit so the chain isn't so floppy. And if you have to fiddle with it, fiddle with it. Just don't get frustrated. Enjoy your time with your chainsaw. And we're going to turn it over a few times to make sure it's halfway lined up and it's it's got down in those grooves because I've seen, I've done this, if it's outside of the groove and it's on this fatter part and you go to tension it, well the first time you move your chain it's going to drop down in those grooves and then your, your tension is going to be all messed up. So just just turn it over a few times and that looks good and we're gonna put our side cover back on and then put our bar nuts back on and these are righty tighty so there we go so to tension your bar after you've taken your chain off now this is this goes for now or later if you have it pinched and you have to take it off and then you have to put it back on um, well, I guess we'll do it like this so we want to run the run the nuts up to where they're kind of they have a little bit of tension but this this bar can still move can you see the bar moving there and then uh, what we'll do is we'll pick up on the nose this is this is this is important pick up on the nose and um, and then you've got your your tensioning screw back here on this 170 it could be anywhere on on your some of the steels are in the side some of them are in the front like this but you'll want to pick it up like this by righty tighty tightening it until the chain you'll see the chain start moving see the chain moving until it just touches the bottom of that bar right almost right A little bit more see how it's just a little saggy so you just want it just right right there see how it moved and now it's just touching the bottom of that bar that's perfect but you want to keep pressure up on the tip that'll help later maintain your tension properly you start with the back nut tighten that down then move to your front one and tighten that down if you only have one just tighten one and there we go so that's good and tight. I like to take the, the scrunch, pull the chain around. You want to keep your hands off. You know, you don't want to be, if you, ha if you don't have gloves on or whatever, but make sure. But yeah, there's your tension. You just want it just touching the bottom of the bar. That's it. You don't want it sagging. You don't want it sagging down here, and you don't want it so tight to where it doesn't have any, any tension. That's important. So there we go. We got that. Cool. Chainsaw is ready to go. Now, let's talk about what safety gear we're going to wear. Okay, so we have our chaps on. Well, let's see, we'll follow our list. In uh, my case, I have eye protection. You'll want to wear some, some glasses, which you brought. Thank you, very good. And then ear protection, which you brought. She has muffs there. And I have this, you know, this hard hat with the muffs built into it. Plugs, ear plugs are fine too. Whatever. Um, gloves. You want to wear some gloves. Boots. You got your boots on. Looking good. Um, Husqvarna, I was reading through one of their manuals. They recommend steel toe boots. Um, definitely wear something that's going to be more durable than flip-flops or um, tennis shoes of some sorts. That's, yeah. Um, anyway boots steel toe you don't have to composite toe would be okay uh, they just say in steel in case the chain does hit your toe it, it'll protect your your feet from getting cut um, yes it does happen trust me so um, chaps we got our chaps on uh, Bea has some steel brand ones on they're good uh, I've got some Amazon brand ones on I believe gear you want to get some wedges I know I got some wedges floating around in here somewhere. Uh, but anyways, yeah, felling wedges if you're going to be felling, and uh, something to drive your wedges with. 
the if you if you are doing some wedging work not necessarily all the time felling but if you're blocking up a, a log or something that's on the ground already uh, wedges help I'll show you that later if, if when we're when we're actually cutting when we, when we do that so uh, okay great so safety on the chainsaw so we, we covered ourselves now we're gonna go to this guy we've cleaned it we've checked it over you know we've, we've, we've made sure everything is, is good to go um, we want to check our chain break okay does the chain break work it works this is a chain break uh, this stops the chain if it's rotating you see how it turns like this now, you see I'm pulling this chain from the back forward this way it's sharp this way it's not as sharp uh, the back side of these cutters are not sharp so you can pull it like that but when the chain break is engaged this should not move which we're going to test this actually with the saw running later but we just want to make sure it functions first before we even start it up just to it doesn't work yes it works great uh, so throttle lock this is like an operator presence this one is not functioning um, but we're just gonna have to but if it doesn't work you want to make sure that this trigger can't be pulled if this is not pushed down so the 335 XPT here this trigger cannot be activated until this is pushed down that way if you did drop it and it got hung on a limb it wouldn't just take off and start spinning on you um, so that's that's a safety thing that's that's on a lot of the newer I say newer 1970s <laughs> saws and up but um, some of them do some of them don't but uh, on the older older ones but uh, everything recently is, is kind of is like this so that's operator presence or safety switch there you'll make sure that works um, like I said this one we can maybe look at it and figure out why but either way um, the chain catch we talked about the chain catch earlier uh, make sure that's in place and on this one it is it's it's right there we're good and then uh, your right hand guard so when you're operating the chainsaw you're going to operate in this configuration you're not going to use it backwards okay this is, we're always going to use it like this always 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 left hand on your grip on your your wrap and right hand on your trigger always this so when you're when you're running the saw and if this chain broke let's just say it broke or you had it in this position here and you were cutting imagine the chain falling down like this okay this right hand guard is built out extra extra wide to cover your hand in case that chain did fly backwards so you want to make sure that's not broken missing something like that okay um, Let's see, anti-vibe mounts, uh, you just want to make sure that they're not broken, that it's, you know, that's these little rubber mounts here, it should be a couple of them back here, there's one here, and there's one down below, in between here and here. Um, these look good, these are in great shape, actually, so that's, that's perfect. So, uh, you can kind of test those, hold the body, and kind of wiggle and jiggle, kind of feel, everything looks good. It's not going to, if you get, if you did cut, and you had to pull on it, you don't want the, the handle ripping off of the saw while you know if, if something did happen it's just just something to keep an eye out for your stop switch <clears throat> make sure it works you know and the stop switch is is here so the O is going to be is off and the I would be on these are international kind of electrical signals and uh, so we just want to make sure it functions the Husqvarna's are a little bit different but all, all saws are going to be different you need to check out your owner's manual but on this 170, this is what we have today. So this this functions. It looks like it's working okay. Uh, and then your muffler is tight. You want to make sure the you know just physically that it's not loose because they do rattle loose. They have rattled loose, and uh, that it's clear. You know that the exhaust ports are actually clear, and that you're not gonna have it full of dirt daubers. I don't know if you guys have those in your part of the country, but uh, they like to make dirt chunks in things that have holes in them around us so that looks good we're good to go uh, if it's not you know maybe take it off clean it out whatever you know you can make sure it's cleaned out so okay great that's the chainsaw uh, all the cool stuff is ready to go um, next we'll talk about the kickback zone okay kickback zone is is a dangerous um, thing that can happen while you're using the chainsaw and what that is is if you look 
90 degrees kind of straight out from the bar here to here. So 90 from here to here is what's called the kickback zone. And if you were cutting and your bar tip hit something in that zone while it's running, it will it will kick back. So we'll, we'll show you that. And you can, at a slow speed in a controlled manner, we'll, we'll do that. Just to make sure everybody understands that it happens. It can be controlled and you just want to avoid it. That's the main thing. You want to make sure uh, you understand that can happen. Uh, because especially like you're talking about cutting your, cutting your logs in a big bin, if you don't have your saw all the way in, and it grabs another log that's above it, it could kick back. So that can be dangerous. You want to make sure when you're cutting that you have a full, you know, cut as you go down, not just trying to willy-nilly in the middle of it. So just wanted to talk about that kickback zone, difference in cutting. Oh, yeah, okay, so um, that's the kickback zone is up here. So you just want to be careful with that. Also, we want to talk about um, cutting, cutting one-handed and over your head. So, all right, if you're holding the saw like this and it does kick back, you, your arm doesn't have the ability to hit the to hit the, the chain break because it's already in this position and I haven't even activated the chain break yet. So you just wanna be conscious of that. So if, if there is a tree down, you know, and, and it has fallen in your yard, just try to get it as low as you can. And don't use your saw one-handed either. You don't want to just because then you have no control of, of anything at that point. You, you don't. So you want to make sure shoulders blow. That way, if it does kick back, you've you've, you've activated that chain break. So, no problem. Yeah. Uh, sharpen the chain. Uh, if if you do sharpen your own chain, um, there are many different types of sharpening devices. Okay. So we have a sharpening kit here. This is just a basic kit you can purchase at your, uh, I'll put some links below. Anyways, you can get these at your local farm, home store, tractor supply, I'll use that name, or whatever you have in your area. Um, Rural King is another one I'm, I'm familiar with. These are. This is the, the gauge to set your rakers here in between your your thing and then this this tells you your angles for your filing this is the little handle for the files this is a flat file for filing your rakers round files for your teeth and a file gauge that you would put your file inside of here I'm not this one works it does work there's nothing wrong with this set um, that's it's just a nice one to carry into the woods with you another method are using these these guides I've tried all these guys <laughs> I've tried them all you can see I've got I've tried them all I do a lot of hand filing with just the round file that would be just just this well here just this part right here so just the round file you can you know you can file those teeth back this is actually a sharp chain thank you for bringing a sharp chain but um, we can Sharpen with just a file. This this gauge here works really good. I I've used these in the past, and uh, we can make this is a whole nother video on just how to use this really. Uh, uh, they, and these work. Uh, my favorite, and I've got a video about how to use this actually. This is called a Timberline chainsaw sharpener, and um, yeah, in fact, I've got a video. I'll throw a link in there for you guys, and uh, you can check that out cool. later. Uh, but it, it, it tells you how to use this this Timberline sharpener. Um, really like these guys. And this is going to go on the bar like that. And then... Um, where did you go? Here we go. So you would use this with the... Here we go. This with the actual... Um, burr and this would go onto our sharpener slide in there and then it would go through and sharpen the tooth just like that and it would make it exact it's very exact when you get done um, and uh, like I said I, I can I've got those other videos out there and well not one video out two videos but I haven't made the second one yet either way 
um, on how to use this guy. Very nice, very nice piece of equipment. Um, if you're not into hand filing with just a hand file, that's that's some options for you. Um, but anyway, so make sure your chain is sharp. Um, filing angles, we'll cover all that. Your rakers, you want to make sure your your rakers are, are cut back to where they need to be and a lot of that is depending on your chain uh, and your manufacturer of your chain and what size of the chain it is depends on how deep you want to make your this is called a raker right here this is the raker this this guy right here right in front of the cutter tooth so this is the cutter top plate gullet tie strap right here these are just components of the chain just just for your reference or whatever but uh so yeah the, the rakers are set to typically about 25 thousandths below the top of that cutter right there so that's at zero and this is 25 thousandths below that uh you just want to make sure you have plenty of of you know raker there and this has been sharpened by probably a shop if i had to guess because it looks pretty nice yes. um so yeah just something to keep an eye on like i said we'll have We'll have we might do another video about sharpening chain because that's a whole nother <laughs> that's a that's a it's a science and a uh, art I, in itself yes. yes so um so there we go so breakers are set to different depths of to the relative to the cutter depending on hardwoods and softwoods depending on what you're cutting we'll go for a shooting in the middle with a 25 thousandths is going to give you a nice but you don't again well that's a, that's a whole nother a whole nother thing so different types of sharpeners ah so here we are to starting now all that being said all that time <laughs> we're ready to start your chainsaw okay cool all right so super exciting guys um would you like to do the honors from the get-go sure. okay all right so um so first thing we want to make sure if we did fill this saw let's say we filled it right here on this tailgate we want to make sure we move away from where we filled it because gasoline fumes are flammable you don't want to catch your ground on fire if you did spill some gas and it's inevitable if you're like me you're going to pour the gas in there and it's going to go everywhere that's just the way it is and oil oil is my favorite thing to dump all over the place by far absolutely you dump it everywhere so um, you want to make sure you move it. We did not fill it here. We'll put the gas can away. In fact, we'll set it over here. I haven't even opened So, an approved method to start would be to um, put your foot in the in the, the right hand guard in the bottom of that, and then have your left hand on the on the grip, and then set your chain brake. That's that you have to do that, and then you know then then pull on it right. So that's that's one one method, and it works. There's no no problem with that. My preferred method is the between the legs method. Tilt the saw at like a 45 or so, a little bit off center, and uh, again, you, you would have everything set. And then uh, again, chain break, and then pull it pull it like this. It's just it's just more convenient for me, but whatever you feel comfortable with. So. Um, yeah, so let's see if we can get this thing started up. So we've got all of our safety gear on, and uh, we're ready to start this guy up. So first things first, we're going to move this switch from the off position, which is probably where it was last time because you turned it off, to the on position. And then on these steels, you have to pull the trigger. Oh, now it wants to work. Now the trigger lock works. Okay. Anyways, pull the trigger and push this down all the way so pull the trigger push down all the way do you see that mm -hmm. so that's off on pull the trigger right it's kind of hard to show and then all the way down so what that does is it sets the full choke so full choke is where you want to start just mm -hmm. like your log splitter probably mm -hmm. has a choke on it uh, full choke and then that's half choke and a high idle and then that's run so what we'll do first and I'm gonna do like uh, we kind of did off-camera the way Bea 
feels comfortable starting so I'm gonna do it just like she feels comfortable to watch so I'm gonna put my foot in the the right hand grip there and then I'm gonna put my left hand on this the wrap and then I'm gonna pull all right did you hear how it barked it, it, it tried to start up that's where you stop pulling on it in full choke and you move it over to the half choke half choke I just clicked it up one click to the half choke there okay and then what we're going to do put our foot back in there don't do anything with the trigger and we're going to pull on it again so did you see how it started up with the chain brake on it was controlled you see how it started up with the chain brake on and it was controlled i flipped it off real quick and, and hit the trigger to take it out of that high idle. So that high idle is to help you warm it up if it's cold. So that's how that works. So uh, once it's started up, you probably don't have to use the full choke. Uh, you probably can get away with it flipping up to, it might even start with it on run. Let's see if it'll start on run. I don't want to flood it is what I'm, what I'm getting. Yeah, okay. So, you can see once it started up on choke, it should start right back up pretty much with just without the choke on. All right, so we got uh, we got the saw running and uh, it's kind of warmed up a little bit because I wanted to go through some of that. And what Bea is going to show you now is how she's going to start it. And then she's going to show you guys how the chain brake works. She's going to activate it while it's running just to kind of test it. And then she's going to reset it and run the saw a little bit more. So uh, take it away. So she's gonna turn the switch on. She's gonna make sure her chain brake is activated. Start it up. So there you go guys, Bea is doing amazing. This is the first time she's ever actually ran a chainsaw, started it by herself, ran the chain, chain brake, she bottled it up a little bit, amazing, doing great. So uh, that's about it for us guys, that's kind of like a preliminary before you get to cutting and there's going to be some more in-depth kind of cutting techniques and, and things like that but this is the basics of the basics this is what you need to do before not necessarily I'm sorry not what you need to do this is what you're recommended to do by the safety manuals and things like that that I've researched and uh, if you guys if I missed anything uh, please please let me know and uh, and we can we can make sure everybody else gets the same information because you know the goal is safety i don't want to see anybody cut i uh, don't want to see anybody get hurt have a tree fall on them done it myself all this good stuff so um anyways guys thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time